right into the festive spirit of the season with cocktails. Sharif has been an invaluable part of the Celebrity Catwalk team, and he's here today to show us some great cocktail hacks for when you want to look like the master mixologist with little effort. Good to see you again, Sharif. Yeah, it's great seeing you. Yeah, How's everything? everything's great. Cool, cool. So walk us through drink number one. Drink number one is uh, my famous uh, chocolate martini. It's Ooh, been a big uh, Chocolate. Hit, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and if you're a chocolate lover at home, gentlemen, you know, you got, for your ladies, Pay attention for this one, you know. This is gonna be good. Um, so, all right. So, it's very easy. It's basically just two drink, uh, two uh, two bottles. You got the chocolate liqueur, and then you got the uh, uh, vanilla vodka. Ooh. That's basically it. Simple, simple as it. Wait, just two ingredients? Just two ingredients. Wow. That's it. This I have to see. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, uh, dip your uh, martini rim into honey. Ooh. Some people do it in water, but since we're going to be using uh, powdered sugar, mm -hmm. it'll melt with water. So we use honey yeah. as more of a like a good texture. To so honey on. and sugar lines That's the rim right. of it. Isn't that good? Ooh, I'm hooked already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now once that's all pretty and mm -hmm. all done, we get right to work. So. First things first, it's one ounce of uh, vanilla vodka. You can put some more for mine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding! <laughs> and then one ounce of uh, chocolate uh, liqueur. Definitely more of this one. This time I'm not joking. <laughs> not even open. <laughs> there we Ooh. go. All right. Does it matter what brand of chocolate liqueur? Um, Godiva is the best, but um, you could just get any any kind, really. It's, okay. But I prefer Godiva. Okay. And Me too. Mix that up. We do our cha-cha dance. The cha-cha <laughs> dance. <laughs> Break it. And there we go. It's really as simple as that. Ooh. All right. Isn't that lovely? That is beautiful. There we go. Oh, my goodness. And yes. Now, that looks perfect, you know, and good as it is, but, you know, what's, what actually makes it like, to, like the icing on the cake uh -huh. is to garnish it with uh, chocolate shavings. Ooh, so yes! That's what I do. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there you need to come go. to my house and make this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there Ooh, we go. That is so pretty and so special. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. It's the details. Thank you, Sharif. Thank you. Now we'll be back. We're going to take a break and come back with Sharif's drink number two. So now we've had our chocolate martini, Sharif. What's next? All right. So now we're going to do, uh, I call it a berry, a berry, a berry Christmas. A cocktail? very berry Christmas. A very, yeah, very berry a Christmas. A very cocktail. berry Christmas cocktail. Because yeah, it's all berries and stuff. Ooh. But so I see you have gummy bears here. Yeah, and that's part of the drink. And so let's talk about this first. What mm. we have here is um, re uh, regular gummy bears, mm -hmm. right? And uh, what we do with the gummy bears is we sort of like give them a little bath with uh, any any kind of berry vodka that you like. Oh. If you like cherry, I'd say use that. I like raspberry, raspberry. so you just. Let them soak in there, you know. Just let them. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how long do you let them sit there? Well, I, oh, for a day. Okay. For a whole day. I know it's very Martha Stewart-ish, but it's actually really—it's worth it. Mm. You know, it's worth it. It's worth the time. So I'd that's say. why it looks shiny like these. There you go. And this is the after. <laughs> this is what it looks after the day after. Oh my goodness. There you go. I think I like those. And they're pretty—they're pretty tasty, and they're good just to eat it by by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, by, I mean, as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and also Not by, by yourself. Myself. Yeah, yeah, in the corner. <laughs> No, I'll but have it's to share exactly. But it's also it's also a good pretty little garnish. They don't float; sinks on the bottom, so it's like a cool little, you know, little surprise at the end. That's cute. So yeah, so let's get started. So mm -hmm. first, we'll present our our glass. So we're lining the brim again with honey. Lining, yeah, lining the rim the rim again with honey. Extra sweetness. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love this. And make sure you dab just a little bit. Don't go too crazy, because mm -hmm. when you lift it up, then you'll get like all that honey just dripping down. It's not going to look nice. Mm -hmm. So less is more. Less is more, <laughs> absolutely. And then. And powdered sugar. Dip it in the powdered sugar. Give it that nice. Mmm. It's like a snow crusted. Yeah, it gives drink. it that kind of appearance. This is perfect. Wow. There you go. And mm. then we'll just throw in the alcoholic berries. Oh. Gummy bears in there. Man, they are so sticky, but so mm -hmm. good. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. All right, all right. Come on, let's get started. Mm -hmm. um, now, 
for this, we're going to use one ounce of uh, raspberry um, vodka. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? You, you didn't. You said that there's no difference with cherry, raspberry. Well, that's for the for the gummy bears because okay. the thing, and the reason why, and I should explain that is because the gummy bears themselves already have flavor mm -hmm. in them. So and a lot of sweetness. And a lot of sweetness. <laughs> yes, I had to actually take it away from you. She was like eating all of them. I and did. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying those gummy bears. <laughs> so we got one ounce of um, of uh, raspberry vodka. Mm -hmm. And one ounce, believe it or not, of um, uh, vanilla. vanilla vanilla vodka, I know. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a curveball. You would think that you just stick with berries I and all that. I would think so. But you know, sometimes vanilla gives it a, an aromatic kind of flavor yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a nice scent. Yeah, yeah. Nice little mysterious flavor, too. Yes. So, one ounce of that and one ounce of that. Mm -hmm. um, now, we're also going to use some sherbet ice cream for I this. I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use um, uh, raspberry sherbet mm -hmm. and just one scoop. Put it in the glass, mm -hmm. I mean in the mixer. And now just one ice cube, uh, just one ice cube in here just to swoosh it around, help swoosh it around and stuff. <laughs> I know it's already iced, already cold, but helps it. And then, um, let me see. Oh. And then a splash of lemon. Wow. The reason why is because we're using two uh, two vodkas, mm -hmm. so it's strong as it is. The splash of lemon actually helps, like sort of like neutralize it. Mm. So just a little bit of lemon. So we have raspberry flavor, we have vanilla flavor, a little and bit then of a little bit of lime. So it sounds lemon. really mm -hmm. funky, but it's actually not that bad, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Once you try it, All right, let's get that settled. Under five minutes. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Wow. Which is it's really so cool. simple. It is, yeah. Right over those gummy bears. Right over those gummy bears, baby. Oh my goodness. There we go. This looks super fruity and delicious. Wow. Oh. And there you have it, case number two. And so um, this is the very berry Christmas. And uh, it, it doesn't look intimidating. Yeah, very berry Christmas. <laughs> but it's, uh, it'll kick you in the butt, and it's really. <laughs> really strong. Very cool. Thank you Very so good. much for Thank being here, much. Sharif. Thanks for having me. <laughs> if you would like to book Sharif on any of your New York City-based events, reach out to us at CelebrityCatwalk.com. I saw you at Paws in the City all this weekend. Yes, <laughs> it was super fun. Had a great time. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, definitely. <laughs> so do tell. Tell us all about Little Bear Dog Apparel. Well, we try to make people style clothes for dogs. So not your everyday dog fashion, kind of more things that we would wear for our dogs. So we follow the trends that are going on in today's fashion world, you know, mm -hmm. chambray, plaid, and we try to make things uh, that people would want to wear, but make them for their dogs. Of course. We'll yeah. talk about the jacket a little bit later, because I know we have a lot to talk about that. That's the the the, the big biggest holiday piece item, I would that say. I cannot, cannot stop staring at. <laughs> <laughs> when did Little Bear Dog get started? Well, we released our first collection last holiday, actually, so we just celebrated one year. And since then, we've released four collections, one per season. Mm -hmm. And it's been a really exciting time. You know, we kind of get to make our establishment in each season. Mm -hmm. And um, one year in, I'd say we're doing pretty well. I would say so. This is quite the collection. We have Thank fur, you. we have yeah. plaid, we have denim. That's right. I think you touched on all the bases. Yeah. <laughs> now, you said there were a lot of phases that went through in designing the smoking jacket. How did you finally design on the color and the, the neckline? The That's a great question. You know, a lot of people really liked our bathrobe. So mm -hmm. we kind of wanted to make something that had a similar kind of feel because I think it's cozy for the dogs. People mm -hmm. were feeling comforted by the way that it's a shawl collar and it's very adjustable. And so we decided to make kind of a fancier version. And we went the velvet to go with the original yes. smoking jacket feel. But of course, we had to spice it up a little bit for the new, you know. And uh, so we made this out of faux leather. Mm -hmm. It's actually quilted like a real smoke smoking jacket, <laughs> but it's actually quilted faux leather. Oh, Mila loves it. <laughs> and the inside, we had to go big. We made a silk charmeuse lining, and it is so soft. Your wow. dogs are going to love it. She's living it up more than I am. I a know. silk liner. I think sometimes she's better <laughs> dressed than I am, really. <laughs> 
Where do you get your inspiration? Is Mila your number one doggy muse? You know, she inspired it from the beginning because she loves wearing clothes and I make people clothes as well. So I kind of start thinking, yeah, I can make something cuter than mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. I started making shirts just for her mm -hmm. and she really liked them and people started asking me where I got them. So I was like, hey, let's give it a shot. So we started making, we started with the plaid flannels. That's kind of our go-to thing and mm -hmm. the denims and whatnot. And um, <laughs> what do you think, Mila? Is that your favorite? Yeah, and so <laughs> after that, we just started kind of developing styles that people were asking for mm -hmm. and things that were in today's fashion. Okay. So you said you make people clothes and now doggy clothes. What inspired the transition? That's a great question. I actually work with tons of people's brands making like patterns and development and whatnot. And mm -hmm. I was going, why do they not make such cute clothes for dogs? For you know, they, these cold, everybody in New York who has a little dog can attest to that when it's cold, you really do need to put them in something mm -hmm. when you go outside. Not you know. just a sweater, but exactly. something stylish. And people opt, you know, they end up putting them in something that's maybe so-so because mm -hmm. they really are cold and you have to grab something as you go. So mm -hmm. I wanted to create some more options for these New Yorkers with small dogs. So most of your production is in the U.S. That's right. How did you come about with that decision? I'm all about it. You know, I would rather keep work here and keep it all kind of a team effort. It enables us to feel as a team creating things from start to finish. So, of course. Yeah, we work with a couple of really great New York local sewers who help us out. And it's really a great overall process working locally. Oh, thank you for keeping it here in the U.S. Keep Definitely. those jobs coming. I know. <laughs> Made in New York. <laughs> Where do you see Little Bear Dog Apparel in five years? You know, we, we've had great success with the Little Bear market and the mm -hmm. little dogs, but I would really like to expand to a bigger market mm -hmm. and kind of create something aimed at bigger dogs. We've had a lot of requests for things for pit bulls especially. Wow. So we're thinking of developing something to keep the bigger dogs warm coming now, up. That would be very interesting because I can't really say I've seen a very stylish, bigger animal. Exactly. I've seen maybe the tiny dogs and they're so cute and they fit around, they're so cute. But right. the bigger dogs, this is, this is their time too. Yeah, and at first we kind of thought that more people dress little dogs in clothes for fun. If you're dressing a bigger mm -hmm. dog, it might be for a more utilitarian purpose. Maybe it's a life jacket, right, you know, right, something like that. Practical. But we, we're, as I get these more requests, it's like people want their pit bulls to be approachable and mm -hmm. friendly. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of thinking about expanding into that market. Very good. Yeah. Tell me about your line, Little Bear Dog Apparel. Which is your favorite? Or you can start with which was... Oh, gosh. Which is my favorite? <laughs> well, our most recent, of course, is the smoking jacket, like we've talked about. And mm -hmm. we made a silk scarf as well this season. You wow, know, that's cute. For the classy event. Look at this. Pure silk brocade with a snap, of course. Everything is snap on, snap off. We have oh to keep goodness. it practical for the dog lovers. So cute. And everything is machine washable. Crucial for dogs. And humans. Of course. <laughs> yeah, right? I think I would have to say that my personal favorite is a combination. We're all about layering. When people get cold, we layer up, so why mm -hmm. not dogs? So we made the button-ups. These are kind of our favorite items. This one's the eggplant and olive flannel. So cute, it looks super warm. Wow. All 100% cotton, denim, plaid. And these you can layer up with the overalls, which is my favorite outfit at the that moment. That is so cute. So you can layer the denim. This one's actually corduroy. So Annie, tell us about the line. What's your favorite piece? Which which do you like the most? Oh, that's so hard to say. <laughs> Obviously, our most recent piece is the smoking jacket for mm -hmm. holiday, and we also made a silk scarf to go with the holiday collection. Mm -hmm. And I think my so favorite cute. piece would have to be the flannels layered up with the overalls because when it gets cold, what do we do? We layer up. Layer so up. We decided that <laughs> why not dogs? So can I dress Mila? Maybe yeah, have let's like let's do um, it. You said this is like an eggplant. Yep. Or we have the the tan and orange. Which one would I go with? Oh, with overalls? definitely. Well, these are not Mila's size. She's Aww. an extra small. Extra. So tiny. let me try on the overalls for you, though. Okay. Ooh. I'm actually curious These to see how the overalls would look. I've never, this is. They're this kind is of the simplest product, to be honest, because really? they unsnap all the way flat. You can really just like completely unsnap them off. So oh. some dogs are difficult to dress, so we have to accommodate for them too. Wow. Snap around. I guess Mila's accustomed to this, right? Are you oh, accustomed? Yeah, she's a pretty good <laughs> model. I try, you know, dogs will be dogs. So we try to make yes. everything snap on, snap off, as easy as possible and as, as adjustable as possible. Super cute. What do you think, Mila? Are you rocking the overalls? I love it. 
It's got wow, her pocket that was on the so back. Easy. Pen so this, pocket. is this for a belt? Is this a belt loop? Yeah, <laughs> we use it for our leash. You know, some dogs are a little, they tug a little harder than others, mm -hmm, but if your mm -hmm. dog is well behaved, you can certainly use it as a leash holder. Okay, very cool. Next, I want to see the, the mink, the, the oh, serenity or yes. the shawl. Because this every New York girl needs a faux for a stole, I would say. Yes. Yes, it's supposed to look like a brooch. Of course, it's a snap, you know, for all practicality of purposes. Of course, of course. You want to try that on, Mila? She loves this. Can you I be think our this model might today? be her favorite thing. We have to go with the snap on everything, right, Mila? Yeah. This is so cute. <laughs> And I must say, I haven't seen anything like this. This is what makes it so cool and right. so original. You know, I think there's a lot of people out there who Love are it. interested in fashion and they have these small dogs, and so why not? Wow, that is so cute. Let's see, what else can we try on? Perfect for the holiday party, right, yes. Mila? Yes, someone is gonna be jazzy. Oh yeah. <laughs> So we have... Our, our bandanas are really popular. A lot of dogs like to wear bandanas, and it's an easy item for a lot of dogs to wear because it's very easy. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to bother the dog that doesn't like wearing clothes. So these mm -hmm. are very popular. This one here is our striped chambray bandana, but we have all kinds of varieties. And it's kind of the same idea as a standard bandana, except wow. it's snap on and off, and it's just pleated, so it looks like it's tied. She makes everything look good, doesn't right? she? Right? You're kind of cute. <laughs> Let's try one more. All right. Uh, you said most of these are not her size, but let's yeah. go with the tie. I love this. Oh, right. And with this the whole... one was inspired by a men's silk ascot. Ooh, you know. I actually like ascots. They're super cool. I think cool. they're coming back. I, I hope have a so. firm belief. So we're kind of a fan of this one right this now. This is cute. I love it. And she likes to layer it up, like I said, with her other jacket. <laughs> Fashion Central yeah. right here. <laughs> Super cute. Thank you so much, Annie, for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Please come back. Oh, we will. And bring Mila, too. Definitely. She's <laughs> always up for a good trip. Yeah. <laughs> Head over to littlebeardogapparel.com to check out all the goodies that Little Bear has to offer. Welcome back to Celebrity Catwalk. I'm Stephanie Matera. And today I have an amazing woman with me. Her name is McDella Cooper. She's the founder of the McDella Cooper Foundation. As a teen, she fled war-torn Liberia and settled in the United States and is now a humanitarian uh, helping children in Liberia. And she's here to tell us more about that. Thank you, McDella, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Stephanie. So my first question is, where do you derive your strength from? Because as a teen, here you were in Liberia in this war-torn country, and you had the bravery to flee to the Ivory Coast yes. and come to the United States and start a whole new life. So wh where did you drive your strength from then? Uh, that's very interesting. You know, I, I never really thought about it uh, in that way that I had to have had this strength or I do have this strength. You know, you just uh, wake up and you see a need to take action and you take the action right. without really thinking too much about it. It's uh, the human nature. The human nature has this extraordinary ability to just survive at all costs and all means by all means necessary. So yeah. I think this is sort of the mode I've been on, mm -hmm. um, trying to survive the Civil War, mm -hmm. getting out, getting to a place of security and, and finding some normalcy wherever um, yeah. I could find it. How did you find when you first came to the United States? Was it an easy transition for you or? <laughs> <laughs> Not so easy. I, um, you know, it's funny when you live in Africa, you watch a lot of American movies and films. Yes. So you sort of understand American <laughs> culture from that perspective. Exactly. But when I arrived, unfortunately, my life wasn't quite the American film. I was in a yeah. in a ghetto of Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. It was it was a little a different reality than from from that which I've seen on the American film. So yeah. it's uh, it was it took me a little bit to get adjusted to that. It was like where is that America I saw in the films? Right. And so <laughs> I wanted to see that America, but unfortunately my. My faith it didn't lead me to that right away, but it eventually came. It eventually came, Absolutely. and now you, you're living the American dream. You know, you live in Manhattan, um, mm -hmm. and you haven't forgotten your roots, and that's what I really love about you, that you didn't let your success or that you did have a better life here in the States uh, change you. You really are still that same person, humble, Absolutely. wanting to give back. Um, so I, I really admire that. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're so welcome. And... So you started your foundation. Yes. And was 2009? No, actually, we started in 2004. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we started way back when the peace agreement was just signed by the really? U United Nations forces went into Liberia in 2004 and made a peace agreement, and we started right away. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So you knew that was the moment to yes. get started. Absolutely. So I was working for Ralph Lauren, doing very well, but I just uh, could no longer stand to see yes. my country just always in the press, but sort of in a negative connotation. Yes. And so I took it upon myself, got some friends together in the New York um, fashion industry, and we started this foundation. And, and uh, it's ma amazing enough, there are still, still those friends that help me out today. That's incredible. Yeah. And then you broke ground in what year? In 2010, actually, okay. we built the school because we started in 2004 just randomly helping women and children. Mm -hmm. Then we sort of decided, okay, these children need traditional education. Yeah. And so we had we were paying that tuition to go to different schools around the, the mm -hmm. capital. And, um, and a lot of the kids were having a hard time getting to the schoolhouses. Yes. And so we realized a lot of the kids were either sick um, just from basic malaria Wow. or they just didn't have the means to transport themselves. And mm. due to the heavy rainfall, a lot of the kids um, would just hinder in every yeah. way from getting to the schoolhouses. And so we went back to the drawing table with the board and said, listen, these kids, you know, we, we want to educate them, but they're having a really hard time because a lot of them are homeless. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't have the family structure to support their education, so we yeah. need to put them in a boarding school facility. And when mm -hmm. we checked the school fees for those boarding schools, they were very expensive. Wow. They were So we decided to take our own funds and build a, an actual boarding facility. Um, you know, a lot of people call it orphanage because a, a, most of the kids who live on, mm -hmm. in a boarding school um, are orphans, as mm -hmm. according to UNICEF. Uh, the kids who have one or both parents alive, but they just mm -hmm. don't have the financial means to take care of of the kids' um, basic human rights, or to provide f those four basic human rights, access to shelter, to nutrition, to health care mm -hmm. and education. Yes. If those four basic human rights are neglected, a child becomes an orphan. And so we um, build this school, we build a, a dormitory. Each kid has their own bed, mm. and you were part of the whole process. <laughs> At some point, you helped out. Yes. And, um, and, uh, I so did very little, but thank no, you for saying that. No, everything was everything <laughs> was uh, was a contribution to oh, actually opening the school. That's sweet. Yeah, but it's great to see it come to fruition. Absolutely. How many students do you have now? We if the number fluctuates depends, and especially after the Ebola crisis, we yeah. some kids got displaced, but we usually go around between one fifty. Um, 160 or uh, sometimes go as high as 180 to 200 kids. Wow, so, so it's pretty it's, it's pretty big yeah, school. Yeah, absolutely. It's growing. We want to expand because yeah. the country after the civil conflict had 200,000 orphans and you're talking about just having 200 kids in a school. Such a small we, percentage. We still have a huge yeah. uh, way to go to educate the, those children. But Otherwise, it'll be a big problem tomorrow. Exactly, yeah. but it's good that you've created a format for yeah. it and that it can be replicated. And Absolutely. your school is the first tuition-free school, which Absolutely. I think is important to point out. And yes. also, it's co-ed. Yes. And that's a huge difference. Absolutely. Yes, a lot of times people will say, oh, let's educate the girls because the girls were left behind, which I totally support. Mm. But I also don't want to be a part, I don't want to be a part of the problem for tomorrow. Mm. Meaning you have all these girls who are educated, these, these young ladies who are educated, mm. and the boys are not educated. So what yeah. we, we, we try to create a model, and you know, um, when decisions are made in, on a high level basis in the UN, mm. everyone sort of goes with it because funding's there for it. Mm. Let's educate girls today, and girls do need to be educated. I, yeah. I'm an avid, um, you know, supporter of, of girls' education, mm -hmm. but I think we need to create a balance. Yeah. And so this is what we're doing at the school. We're creating a balance. We educate boys just as much as we educate girls, giving yeah. girls equal opportunity and not leaving them behind, mm -hmm. but also making sure they're meeting the challenges as well. Right, and I think also showing men and women how to respect each other, and I think it starts as children. Absolutely. So seeing a woman as an equal in the classroom Absolutely. will lead to a more stable and equal country overall, I think. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to brag about this, but the girls are challenging the boys in sports, in signs, <laughs> and in, 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 in dance. The girls are on, they're on, they're on, they're on it. They're just, uh, they're like, I got this. I can do this. <laughs> That's incredible. So. Yes. One of the other questions I wanted to ask you is, what do you think is the greatest challenge facing the continent of Africa? Mm, that's a brilliant question. Uh, there are so many challenges, but I think one of the major ones is just the unemployment with the youth. Yes. The youth, um, we, you know, for, for example, in Liberia, we have four million people. 
the youth comprises of 60% of the population. And there's a great deal of, um, you know, insecurity because uh, the, the youth are unemployed. Mm. As a matter of fact, these are kids just a few years ago were babies doing a civil conflict. And now they're young adults and they're, most of them are, I mean, some of them are educated, but the vast majority of these children have been left behind out of traditional education. Mm. And now they're ready for the job market. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, there are no jobs. Oh. And, um, and a lot of them, for the very few jobs that are available, yeah. they don't have the education they don't, have, they don't have the qualification for and that job for that for those jobs exactly yeah. so there's a huge it, youth and unemployment are the mm -hmm. two major crises we're facing right now yeah. we have to get those kids at, uh, in in a, in a job market mm -hmm. and it, it, it will require a lot of training mm -hmm. a lot of training yeah mm -hmm. and you're also helping women here Absolutely. in the states and working with the UN yes. um, and to help women into positions of leadership in the C-suites and such. So Absolutely. tell us about that. Um, I was picked up by Impact Leadership 21, ran by Janice Elazar, who's uh, involved with the foundation in support of the United Nations. And she That's said, awesome. Medela, well, you have to be our ambassador. And I <laughs> said, what do I have to do? Because you just have to go around talking about women issues and go yeah. into these uh, conferences and and talking to the CEOs um, and making sure they are challenged and right. seeing to it that they commit to having more women involved in different mm -hmm. aspects of the managerial to upper management level. Yeah. And so we, we talk to CEOs and we talk to leaders of major corporations and make sure women are in high level positions and yeah. if they don't, we challenge them. That's amazing. Yes, it's, it's, it's women have the qualification. Today we shouldn't be talking about why women make less than men, than male co counterparts. It's, it's, not, it's, right. it's, it's, un, it's unheard of. I don't know why we're having that conversation yes. in 2015. I completely agree. And also mm -hmm. women, how can young women see themselves in these positions if they don't already see women in these roles? Absolutely. So I think it's important from that standpoint as well. Absolutely. We, the young ladies uh, need role models. Yes. If their mothers um, decide they don't want to work, they, 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 that's fine. It, but mm -hmm. they still need to have those role models in areas and, yeah. and um, that they want to go into. And, exactly. and mentorship, we, we really push mentorship with impact oh, leadership. Wow. Uh, we have universities all over the world from the United States across to China to Japan and, wow. and, and parts of Africa now where we, we – partner up young ladies with a mentor in the field that she wants to go into so that she have someone who can you know sort of mm -hmm. give her uh, an advanced look into her future and say okay. these are things that we struggle with but these are things I'm hoping that you would not have to deal with and that could also help with the challenge that you said for African youth and unemployment I think that's a great way to to start to tackle that issue. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes. I wanna thank you for being here with us today and sharing your inspiration and <laughs> you're a strong woman and I thank think you. it's important that your message is heard. So we were honored to have you here on Celebrity Catwalk. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> it's great to be here, I love it. <laughs> I should have brought my dog with me. <laughs> you should have brought your dog with you, you could have sat right here, your Doberman, right? Yes, just exactly, rescued. and it was because of you I rescued her. Thank well, you again, you've been, a, you've been a huge role model in my life. Oh, you're so cute, I'm glad that your kids love you your new dog and yes. I'm glad you rescued. If you want to check out McDella Cooper and learn how you can help the McDella Cooper Foundation, please visit the McDella Cooper Foundation.org.